Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Good. Good to be with you. Yes, yeah, so I really want to um, yeah, encourage you to come to uh, the community movie night, Overcomer. Really, we're actually getting to see it, I think, before it's released in America, and that's quite exciting, so that's, that will happen um, in August the 12th. Is that right, John? No, no, it's August the 19th. Oh, August the 19th. If I read the flyer, guess what? It says August the 19th. Yes. yes. So, yeah, really good movie, well produced, a lot of interest around this movie, yeah. um, high quality, and we get to see it just uh, as it's released in America and here. Um, you may know of War Room and Courageous and all the other movies that they've put together. Yeah, so, yep, I know John gets up here every term and, oh, oh yeah, oh, that's nice, nice little movie happening again, but this is, will really change your life and impact a friend, so come along, I'm plugging it, I believe in it, it'll be a really good night, so grab a ticket. So, August the 19th. That's good. So we'll get that one out of the way, so that's good. It's always good to be here and to share with you. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've had a couple of great opportunities to be at a couple of different events. Uh, just over a week ago, I was on Gold Coast at a Global Leadership Network Day with Craig Rochelle, and that is like the highlight of my life and one of the many highlights I've had and opportunities to hear Craig Rochelle from Life Church. Uh, check them out online. Fantastic leadership, fantastic insight. He's uh, certainly spoken into my life when I was at uh, many low points and many high points. And so I had a great opportunity to sit with 800 other people, pastors, educators, uh, not-for-profits, business people, uh, Christians doing wonderful things uh, across Australia and across Queensland. And so it was a great opportunity to be part of that. Uh, Thursday night, Noel and I uh, had an opportunity to go to Grace Lutheran College at Caboolture and be part of a, a ministry partners dinner and just to be encouraged and, and blessed uh, with many other pastors across our suburb and region just to hear what the good work that chaplains are doing there at, at, Lu at Grace Lutheran and different things that are happening there. So that was a, another great opportunity to hear how young people's lives are changed because Christian chaplains are investing in them. Uh, they run Alpha, they run a mini uh, shed program, a thing for girls, lots of different things happening up there, Sam and her team. So that was a, a great opportunity as well. Next Sunday, you have a great opportunity to hear about Operation Christmas Child and Samaritan's Purse. So don't miss next Sunday. Um, Trevor Morris was coming, uh, but he's sending a lady called Glennis uh, McDonald, who is the rep for Sunshine Coast, this area. So she'll be sharing our service next week about Operation Christmas Child and Samaritan's Purse as we support that ministry this year and do up shoe boxes and donate little goodies to children. So be aware about that. If you want more info, see Coral. Uh, fill the box at the back. Uh, we'll be filling up boxes shortly. So it's great to have an opportunity to hear from Samaritan's Purse as we sow into that ministry this year. So let me pray as we come and look at the last bit of Job. Amen, you say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you that we can... Open your word and just again hear from it. Thank you for the life of Job. Thank you for what it's teaching us and showing us. The hard things, the joyful things, the things we may wrestle and struggle with. But Lord God, we trust in you that you do not let us go. That we hold, that you hold us by your hand. So Lord, bless us as we just come and bring this series to a close this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. So what's it all about then? If you're writing some notes, that's the title of my message today. So what's it all about then? Up on the screen there, we've got Job chapter 42, verses 2 to 6. This is Job speaking. I know that you can do all things. My purpose of yours can be thwart. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. Here we see that Job was vindicated. 
in time. But that is not always the way it works out for us. We may have been mistreated, we may have been misunderstood, we may have been misrepresented. Maybe by so-called friends, maybe by so-called Christian friends. And so we live with that pain and disappointment. But there will come a day when everything will be out in the open and everything will be revealed. It's not for us to be preoccupied with trying to clear our name or justify our actions. Instead, we need to get on with God has called, what God has called us to do. What He's called us to be as His people here in this place. And leave the judging up to Him. God will see to it. So let us not worry. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 5, Therefore, judge nothing. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Click. Oh, look at that. Oh, amazing. Look at that. It works by clicking your fingers. <laughs> the marvel of modern technology. Gee, Bill Gates knew what he was doing, didn't he? 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. At times, we all need to leave things in God's capable hands. Yes, I know we don't like to do that, but we need to leave it in His capable hands. God is much bigger than we think. Who knows what will happen if we let God out of these small boxes that we like to put Him in. If we let God be God. It's amazing what He can do. In Job 42 verse 5, we read, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Job gets a revelation of what has been going on, that through the pain and through the suffering, God has not forgotten him. And God has not forgotten you. Despite his troubles, despite the trauma and the hardship, Job never turned his back on God. Yes, he was angry. Yes, he was frustrated. Yes, he was depressed. Yes, he was in pain. Yes, he was misunderstood by his friends. But he persevered. And in the end, he humbled himself before God and was restored. If we're honest, it's hard for us to understand pain and suffering and hardship. And we've been through some things in life, haven't we? <coughs> but we know that God loves us and God is with us. Despite what might be happening around us, God knows best, which is hard to understand when suffering comes. I think I'm still working on that one. What about you? Jesus died for us so that we can get a glimpse of God's glory and grace, so that we can be restored. That's all we have. And that's enough for me. Let's be honest, we struggle when bad things happen to people. When we don't think it's right or fair. Or bad news comes. Or that job finishes. Or that doctor said, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's not good. Or we see a loved one pass away. As we think of Janet and the family. Let us look to Jesus. It's in Him that we see a God who really cares. A God who cares to spare us from eternal suffering because we've placed our trust in His one and only Son. Look at that twisted, tortured figure upon the cross, nails through hands and feet. Back lacerated, brow bleeding from the thorn pricks, mouth dry and thirsty, plunged into God-forsaken darkness.
We see his suffering. But it can be transformed into infinite good. Then, friends, look at the empty tomb, and in the garden there stands Jesus, the crucified Lord, with palms outstretched to you and me, offering a gift of eternal life, saying, Follow me, trust in me, believe in me, come, come to me. For I will restore you. I can comfort you when you hurt. I can wipe your tears. I can walk with you through those pain and full and hard, dark days. Even if the devil is messing with you, with your mind, with your family, with your situation, he cannot mess with you for as long as he wants, as much as he wants. God had to give the devil permission to hurt Job. He didn't get to do what he wanted to do for as long as he wanted to do it. God said to him, now that's enough. That's enough. When God saw his people struggling under the Egyptian slavery, he said, friends, that's enough. He said to Moses, I've seen how my people have been mistreated. I've seen how their backs are breaking with heavy labor. I hear how they cry out to me, and that is enough. And I've come down to deliver my people and to bring them out of Egypt. Every season of suffering, every season of struggle has an expiry date. For God is sovereign and God is in charge. The enemy doesn't run my life. That's enough. That's enough. And God and Job came to that place where that was enough. On the screen there for you, Job 42, 7 to 9. After the Lord had finished speaking to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends, for you have not spoken accurately about me, as my servant Job has. So take seven bulls, and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. Those three friends were wrong, and they need to make it right. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer on your behalf. I will not treat you as you deserve, for you have not spoken accurately about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuhamite, whatever, and Zophar, the Namathaneite, mm, great, did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job's prayer. We're getting to the good bit. The book of Job has been about from start to finish. Staying close to God and trusting Him when bad things happen. When we suffer pain and loss, amongst it all, we want to blame God, condemn Him, walk away from Him, but that is the time, friends, we need to stay faithful. Maybe He wants to teach us something or to help us to speak or to comfort someone who's battling what we are facing or what we have faced. Maybe he's calling us to come and bring a fresh voice. A fresh voice. So in Job 42, a couple of verses When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortune. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 team of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. I don't know if they just appeared miraculously or what happened, but there were feasts and parties and people brought gold rings and money. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. You should read the whole chapter. 
He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He was set. Job lived 140 years after that. My goodness. I think he'd be worn out, wouldn't you? Living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, an old man, I'm sure he was, who had lived a long and full life. I want that. Amen? Anyone else? Yep. Just two of you? Great. All those children? <laughs> children, grandchildren, he had it all. Yeah, he didn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hecklers. Sorry. <laughs> Interesting thought. I'm sure him and his wife got reconciled in some way, yes. Yes, she wasn't too keen in the beginning. <laughs> but isn't that a blessing? It's a great story. It's a great picture of perseverance, isn't it? God restored his life. Friends, Job never found out why the suffering happened. But he didn't lose faith or walk away from his God. And for us this morning, never stop Praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Never stop praying. Never stop believing. You can be a voice of hope and encouragement while you're suffering, while you're struggling. You are not alone. I am not alone. We must embrace forgiveness and hope and healing and trust God to be God. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, may we just let you be God. Lord, many stories, many concerns. For many of us, life has not been an easy road. For many of us, it continues to be a struggle. Maybe health issues, financial, relational, Lord God, but you are there. Let us be a fresh voice of hope to someone in need. Let us carry our brothers and sisters. Let us support one another here in this place. Lord, we want to embrace your forgiveness and your hope. Let us never stop believing, never stop praying, never stop hoping that you know best. And sometimes I just need to leave that with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.